Welcome back to another episode of Living in China. It's your host, King Kwesi, once again on the channel. If you are here for the first time, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video. Liking the video will help the algorithm on YouTube. Comment down below and share this content with a friend. When I was in Shanghai, I met Elvis on the street of Shanghai and he decided to share his life experience with Living in China series. Let's enjoy this conversation. One thing that my culture taught me help those in need and China helped me. I was in need, I was broken down and I came here, I made a life for myself and this is my home. And I can walk home, probably say I can walk home five, six o'clock in the morning and no one will touch me. No one will hurt me. I, I will actually, someone will actually help me. I, I can only speak for Shanghai because I've been here for so long. Dumb foreigners over here that do stupid things. And that's why the government rules and regulations are getting stricter and stricter against uh, foreigners. So I, I, I don't see any problem. But yes, there's still some issues here and there that I don't agree with, but it's minor issues compared to back in my country. Yes, you have the freedom to do whatever you want, but you will be dead. All right, tell us your name, where you're from, and what you do in China. Uh, my name is Albus. I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. I was born in London. I grew up in South Africa. Uh, I'm mixed, uh, obviously. Um, I work in education here. I run six kindergartens here in Shanghai. I've been here in Shanghai for 22 years. Right now. 22 years in China? Yeah. How does it feel to live in China for 22 years? Uh, for me, it's um, amazing. Like, obviously, everyone knows South Africa is not a safe place. I came here when I was 20 years old only. Um, I have a wife, I have two daughters, um, I'm happy here, and China is the safest place for me. You have your wife and kids all in China? Yeah, my wife is from Shanghai. Um, I've met, we grew up together in South Africa. I've known her since I was four years old. And then we got married, and then we came to, to, to Shanghai. So you got married in South Africa and you all moved here? Yeah. And you had your kids right here in China? Uh, one of them were um, in South Africa, the other one was born here in, in Shanghai. How does it feel raising kids in China? It's very expensive, <laughs> very, very expensive, that's for sure. Uh, but I mean, it's again, good education, um, safety is the first thing that a parent think about and that's why I, I still prefer China. And I, don't, I, I love my country, I love South Africa, but I will never ever go back there. It's, specifically Shanghai this is this is a metropolitan city you know so um, I mean like there's nothing to complain about yeah there's a lot of things that, that for us as foreigners disagree with but for me right now it's just like oh let it go like it could be worse our countries are or my country specifically is not that perfect you know so everything the government and everyone is doing over here is to ensure the safety of the people and aspects in China. Your life? Um, it matured me a lot, to be honest. Like, I took a lot of things for granted. Um, and I know what's happening back in South Africa again. Uh, that's why I was like, I'm the luckiest person in the world to be living here in Shanghai. And have a good salary, have a stable um, job, have a stable family, have stable friends. I always come to the same bar all the time. So yeah, uh, it's great to be can't complain. So you've lived in China for 22 years. Yeah. How was China 22 years ago when you moved here? When I arrived at Pudong International Airport, uh, <laughs> I was like, whoa, like, this, it looked like a farm. It, it looked like a city in South Africa. Uh, there was only uh, what's called uh, Oriental Pearl Tower. All these uh, skyscrapers were not there. So a lot of my friends also asked me the exact same thing. Like, Elvis, you've been here for 22 years. Like, how do you see the difference? It was like, it changed so fast. Um, the way, like, also because I'm, I'm from South Africa, when I came over here, I'm not white. And so it was 
very difficult the first two, three years. Uh, like I remember I, I went to the uh, met on a metro and then uh, this old lady saw me next to my wife and then she's like, oh, you're not white, you not everyone liked white people back then. But now it's so different. Like they like for, uh, foreigners a little bit more and they are more uh, interested in different cultures. Hence, for example, the Beijing Olympics, like they're more open right now to foreigners. Wow. 22 years of China. I, I can't believe I've been here for eight years, but I think it feels like a long time to live here for 22 years. I, I still learn every day, you know, the culture. Uh, my Chinese is fluent. I can speak Shanghai dialect as well. I didn't go to a school to learn it. I only said, hey, I will communicate with the locals in my own way. Yeah, for sure, they will think like this guy is talking crap, but that's how you learn a language, number one. That's how you learn someone else's culture. You know, you don't go to a school to learn someone's culture. You interact with them. Living in China for 22 years, what has been the most difficult aspect of your life living here with your family for 22 years? Uh, it's definitely, I would say, for me and my wife and my kids, it was uh, communicating with her family. <laughs> because her family also, they own Chinatown in Cape Town, South Africa. You know, and they had a very Chinese mindset. So for them to understand the way we do it, and my wife as well, because she, yeah, she was there since she was four years old. So she had a very South African mindset and her family didn't understand. Like, oh, she, yes, yeah, she is Chinese, but she's actually not Chinese. Uh, but now everything is fine. Her mom is married to an American. So they back in uh, White Plains, New York. Um, we are here. Uh, we have no chance of leaving. We don't want to leave. We don't want to go anywhere. We love the city. This is my home, away from home. South Africa will always, I will always be South African, but I am Chinese. Being a foreigner in China for 22 years, what has been the most memorable moment you can ever count for living here for 22 years? Um, I remember this one time, this old lady, I was very very drunk in the morning and then i was said i lost my key my wife obviously at home i was with friends and then this old lady came to me and was like pick me up and then she's like where do you live this this woman took me put me in a cab and took me home she asked me where's what's your address i gave the address because i lost my phone i lost my everything you know in china without a phone uh you can't do anything because you use Alipay and WeChat and all that stuff. And she dropped me off in front of my house, knocked at the door. My wife opened uh, the door and made sure that I'm fine. So that was, I was in South Africa, they will never ever happen. So they will just let you sit on the sidewalk. So that is my most memorable. Uh, Yeah, I think it's uh, before I can tell 100% it was very racist, like because I'm not white, blah, blah, blah. But and then I remember when I first, my first job interview was like, where are you from? And I said, oh, my, my mother is white South African. My father is white British. And then uh, this interviewer asked me, like, but you are not white. And then I said, oh, my grandmother is Mexican. And they were like, no, it doesn't make sense. Like your mom must have had this. She actually said this. Your mom actually must have had an affair <laughs> with a black dude. I was like, no, because South Africa is also very diverse. You know, you have black, white, mixed, like people from all over the world. So for me, I don't classify myself as black, white, or whatever. I classify myself as African. And most importantly, I classify myself as human. That's it. People outside China think that foreigners living here are not given their free will to express themselves. Do you feel the same? Um, I yesterday, recently yesterday, um, someone told me that, and I disagree with that. Like, yeah, every country have their rules and regulations. You know, like for example, South Africa is a country for the country by the uh, country for the people by the people. South Africa, uh, China is a country by the country, for the country. You know, there's reasons why they do this. Uh, to answer your question, uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, because again, we have a lot of dumb 
foreigners here in, uh, I, I can only speak for Shanghai because I've been here for so long, dumb foreigners over here that do stupid things. And that's why the government rules and regulations are getting stricter and stricter against uh, foreigners. So I, I, I don't see any problem. But yes, there's still some issues here and there that I don't agree with, but it's minor issues compared to back in my country. Yes, you have the freedom to do whatever you want, but you will be dead in a week if, if the government says, oh, you can do whatever you want. That is why look at China, COVID situation, under control. Look at South Africa, look at Hong Kong, for example, right now. Just yesterday, 6,000 how many cases in one week. China has one or two, then they shut a complete city down. Why? Safety first. In Chinese, we say, entre, the eat. Safety is first. So, yeah, I don't agree with that statement at all. I think uh, like we are still free. Look at foreigners. We can do whatever we want over here. Whereas in South Africa or wherever else, we cannot. We don't have that freedom. Living in Shanghai, a big city, do you have a sense of community here? I do. Um, I'm South African. I have a South African community. Uh, we in group chats together. Um, I have an American community. I have a British community. I mix myself with every kind of community. Uh, everyone know where to find me every Saturday, every Sunday. I, uh, if my wife thinks I'm lost, she knows where to find me. And I can walk home, probably say I can walk home, five, six o'clock in the morning, and no one will touch me. No one will hurt me. I, I will actually, someone will actually help me. I said across. If there are foreigners watching us right now, what is one message you want to send across to them? One message I would say is like, yeah, there's a lot of uh, media, social media and media in general, like they say a lot of bad things about China. It is not true. There's two sides to a story. Okay, so don't look at the bad, look at the good. You must think about like what China did for foreigners. Like the reason you are here, there's a reason you are here in China. There's a reason I'm here in China. Make money, um, safety, all that stuff. Um, my message to you guys is like, open your eyes. Shanghai, I don't consider Shanghai as being China. It's international. This city reminds me of New York City. You have people from all walks of life over here. So my message is like, open your eyes. Don't listen to media, uh, the, what the media is, is telling you. Uh, and come, China welcomes you. China, they are strict right now due to COVID situation. But I mean, like, they're still very friendly. Just this morning over here, someone fell down. I ran and helped this person, right? The other Chinese person next to that person said, why are you helping? It's not. I was like, that is one thing that my culture taught me. Help those in need. And China helped me. I was in need. I was broken down. And I came here. I made a life for myself. And this is my home. Would you say living in China is rewarding for you and your family? 100%. 100%. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.